Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to render and animate a small set in SimLab. So first we're going to import our set, I'm going to go up to the top left here, go to file and click on import. Now SimLab will import a huge range of files from all different modeling softwares. And if you see in the bottom right here where it says all supported, if you click on that, you'll get a big list of all the different file types you can bring into SimLab. One thing I recommend if you are planning to animate or render uh, within this program is to actually check what's compatible with it first, just so you don't trip yourself up further down the line. So I'm going to bring in my set and I'm going to change it to uh, SketchUp. And let's bring in this. Might take a little while at first uh, if your model does have a lot of geometry in it, so just bear with it. Brilliant. So here's my set. It's all appeared. It looks quite nice. So all I need to do now is move it into position. I'm just going to move it into the center of this little floor that we've got here in the default template. So to do that, I just click on these four little arrows here. And I get our usual green, red, and blue axes, and I just click and drag on those to move it in position. If you need to scale it or rotate it, you just click on the arcs here or the orange circle in the center. That'll scale it up. Once you're happy, just click on the green tick, and that places everything. If you do that by accident and you want to change the position, what you do is go over to the left hand panel here where you've got all the objects in your workspace, click on your file, and then you can reposition it. Okie dokie, right, let's start dragging in some textures. So first thing you've got to get used to with SimLab is the objects panel here. You can see that I've got my overall set. And if I click on this little arrow, you'll see that we get these drop down menus. And as I click on each one, you can see a different part of my model is selected. Now, if you want to apply a texture, say, to this whole table in the center, I don't want to go and click on it. Now, in this case, actually, it's all one object. I haven't split that into multiple objects in the original SketchUp file, so I can. However, as you can see with the stool here, it's made up of all different components, the rings, the legs, and the seat. So I can mistakenly click on the stool thinking I've selected it all and in fact I've only selected one specific object. Instead I need to go to its overall file. You can see here that that leg is called 3D Geometry 4 and I can just go up and see here Assembly 2 selects the whole object. This is important for when we are applying materials. Now to apply material we go to the very bottom left where it says materials. And if you've loaded up SimLab without downloading the texture library that it offers you in the first time download, then you'll just have basic MTL. If you have downloaded that library, you'll also have new MTL, new material. And you can actually go onto the website and download it if you have missed that, so don't worry. I'm just gonna use the basic materials if you haven't. Uh, so let's go into where well, we've got ceramics, we've got general, and we've got fabric. Uh, so let's just add a fabric to the floor here. Uh, we've got 3D geometry. All we do, click on the fabric texture, and we drag it onto our selection. There we go. It really is that simple. What you've got selected will have that texture applied to it. So that's right, it's really important to go through this list and select exactly what you want. Now, as you can see, our texture panel comes up. And we've got the carpet texture here, and we've got all our different maps which make that look realistic. And I'm going to explain that in another video coming up very shortly, uh, because this is something which is appearing quite frequently in all of our rendering. Now, a few things I can change, obviously the colour, but if I click on the little arrow underneath the texture block here, I get my options to scale it. So if this is too big or too small, all I need to do is change the U and the V values. To keep it to the same ratio, so basically to make sure you don't stretch the image, you just need to make sure that these two values are the same in this case. 
If they were different, just make sure they're proportionate. So for example, if scale u was two and scale v was four, I need to make sure that, you know, if I make the top one four, the bottom one then becomes eight, which is probably overcomplicating things in reality. They'll almost always be the same value. So for instance, if I want to make it just a tad smaller, I'm going to change it to four and change that to four, and you can see it updates automatically. Okay. Now, we're also going to be adding an animation to this, and I'm going to have a little walk around in VR. So, one thing I need to do is go to the top left. Currently, we're in scene building mode. I'm going to click on that and go down to virtual reality. And you can see that my toolbar has just a few extra tools on the end of it after that. Go to VR Viewer. I'm going to go to Set Start Position. And that adds a figure into our scene. There we go. That's just obscured by the work here. I'm just going to move it using the same translate tools and I'm going to rotate it. I want to rotate it 180 degrees so I'm just going to highlight this number, type 180, hit enter and then tick to finish it off. Again if I need to reposition that I'm going to click on viewer start position on the left here. Don't click on the model itself because you can see even this person is split into multiple components. Click on the start position. What this basically means is when we put the, load the VR, this is exactly where we are going to start every single time. Now, don't worry if you haven't got a VR headset, we can basically launch this almost like a video game. We can have a walk around on our computer. Don't think that because it's called VR, that is purely what it's for. We can, we can avoid VR altogether if needs be. Right, let's see how this looks. Let's go to the VR viewer and click on Show in Viewer, which you need to download which you may have done automatically when you first installed it, or you can just go onto the website and download it from there. It's completely free, so don't worry. Now, we're going to click on desktop mode to launch it almost like a video game. Again, this can take a little while the first time you load it because it's just exporting all that geometry and rendering it at the same time. This screen may be black for quite a while as well, don't worry. It doesn't mean it's frozen, it's just taking a little while. There we go. Wonderful. Now, I've got no lighting or anything in here as of yet, uh, so it's not looking particularly exciting, but you can see already that our texture is slightly reflective, which is weird because it's a carpet, but we can always change that. And I can have a walk round. These textures were actually in the original SketchUp model. So if you aren't really fussed about rendering or you've rendered in another program, it will carry the textures over. Don't worry about that at all. Okay, Brill, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna hit escape on my keyboard. I'm just gonna hit no there to bring me back into the space. So to keep on texturing this, I would keep you know, dragging stuff on. So I go to a new material, which I really advise you downloading because you can see the huge range of textures you get here. And of course, we can bring in all our texture maps uh, from websites like Megascans, or Polygon, which, as I said, I'm going to explain in another video very shortly. I'm going to try and keep this video short and sweet, so I won't add any more textures. Let's go into animation. So all I'm going to do is add a very simple revolve animation to this set. And to do that, I need to first go into my animation panel. So that's on the bottom left here. It says animation. I'm going to click on that. Now, there's two ways we can animate. We can add keyframes, which is these little blue blocks here, or we can go to the top left, click on what now says virtual reality, and go to the animation panel. The animation panel here and the animation in the bottom left are different things. Two different things. So just be aware of that. Basically, these are all our objects and our animations, all our preset stuff. This is our animation timeline where we can create completely custom, custom animations. Right, so I need to select the whole set because the whole thing needs to rotate. If I didn't have the whole thing selected, then only part of the model would rotate and it would become a huge mess. I know the whole set's selected because A, it's got 
all of its edges and its profiles highlighted yellow. And because in the bottom left here where it says selection tree, it says my set name. And that means that any animation which occurs in the timeline next to it will only apply to that set. Right, really simple. Let's go up to object at the top of the screen. Click on that and we're going to scroll down to wheel. And it brings up a little window. It's pretty self-explanatory. When do we want the animation to start? So if it's zero, it's at the very start as soon as we load it. And when do we want it to end? Simlab is 30 frames a second. So if I want this animation to last for four seconds, I need four times 30, which is 120. And I'm gonna type in 120 on the frame here. How many revolutions? So how many times do I want it to turn between the start and the end of the animation? I'm just gonna hit one. And what direction do I need it to rotate? Counterclockwise or clockwise? Now, this is the kind of odd little bit, but it's, it's actually pretty straightforward once you get used to it. Click on pick center, and this is gonna determine the axis that your model rotates around. And in this case, I've got a circular base. So I can actually go down to the left here, click on the arrow, and I can click on pick center of curvature, which basically means I can pick the edge of the circle, and you can just see a little blue arrow in the center there. So I know that this model now is gonna rotate exactly on its center. I'm just gonna hit the green tick to finish that. And there's my animation. This big, long turquoise bar. And I just need to drag my slider to meet the end of it there. If I hit play, you can see it rotates. Don't be uh, put off by how quick that was. The timeline animates slightly quicker than it does in real life. When you load this in VR, it'll be much slower. Okay, so I'm just gonna click play on the right here, and we're all good to go. Now, watch what happens when we go into VR, or desktop mode, sorry, I should stop calling it that really. Nothing happens. And that's because we've only created the animation. We haven't applied it to the object. What we've done is gone, right, I want this type of animation, but I haven't said I want it to apply to this set. Which you may think is really weird and awkward, but actually it's brilliant because we can then apply this animation to anything. So we could have a little handle or a button on the side here and attach that animation to the button so we make something interactive and that's how we create our really amazing interactive sequences and sets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this animation and you'll see there's a little clipper board just at the top here and it says create an animation sequence. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to name it set revolve and I'm going to click on OK. Now in the bottom left hand corner of the screen screen even, <laughs> you'll see that there's an option that says sequences. If I click on that, you can see my set revolve animation is in there. So I've got that saved, I've got that banked. In fact, I could delete this and screw it up completely and I've still got that animation banked. So you get basically build up a little library. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to my set, select it in the left object panel and in its attributes, you can see we've got action, and this is basically our animation. So what type of animation? Well, we're just gonna click play sequence. We've created a sequence here, so we need to play it. And the sequence name, I'm just gonna click in the box and then click on the sequence down here in the bottom left. Two groovy little options. We can click on loop so that it just keeps playing nonstop. And we can also activate start activated, which means that I don't need to click on this in the uh, rendered view in the desktop of the VR, it will automatically be playing. You can stop it, you can click on it and stop the animation, uh, but it will automatically be activated once you dive in. 
Now, when we go into the viewer, there it is. There is our set animating. If you don't like how fast it is, I mean, you saw how quick it was to just add that revolve animation, that wheel animation, you just click on it and it automatically applies. Also, as you add lights and you update materials, it will automatically update, so you don't have to redo everything, it's completely separate. Okie doke, so that is how to, uh, very simply, drag and drop materials onto your digital model in SimLab, and also how to add a very quick and simple revolve animation.